<laughs> so I have a girlfriend who is married with uh, two kids under four. She recently got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And I am calling who, to find out who, di- who, di- that- who, who diagnosed her. Uh, I believe her psychologist. Psychologist? Psychologist. I believe it's psychologist. Okay. And she, yes. she told you this? She told you this? Yes. Yeah. It, she said, she hey, I just got my after. diagnosis. I'm a borderline personality <laughs> disorder. Why, it was more like tears <laughs> than like, everybody's going to judge me. She's been having a, a really rough time uh, in her marriage. Mm. And, um, you know, just dysfunction, communication breakdown. Um, and she'll call me from time to time, like pretty manic one second, then super depressive, and then totally happy, sometimes like just through the whole cycle within 60 seconds, like just kind of cycles through a little paranoia, mm. just a bunch of different things. So it's pretty. Sounds um, like an interesting phone call. It, it usually is. Um, and uh, I want to be able to best support her as much as I can. She's looking into, um, and I've, I've researched some of um, the therapy. I'm trying to think. I think it's dialectical therapy, if I remember. Di- the one where you talk yeah. through things. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully most therapy. You, I guess that's all therapy. It's so interesting. <laughs> Di- it's called dialectical uh, uh, behavior therapy or dialectical cognitive behavior. there's a lot of different you know it's gone through the years and changed um basically so people know what you're talking about you know dialectical you're trying to bring you know the <laughs> two extremes together right and get them talking to each other and that's what you know, people with personality disorders can't hold things in dynamic tension you know like i love you and i'm mad at you right they can't hold that right and so okay. so the, the mad at you in a healthy person is going to take the form of working it out. Why? Because I love you. And the I love you is going to take the form of staying connected to you while I'm talking about my anger in a loving way. Well, if somebody's got a personality disorder, they split those. And so if they're mad at you, they're right. mad at you. And that's it. There's no love. And they're screaming and they're hateful. Yes. And if they're loving and perfect and wonderful <laughs> and idealizing you and you're the best thing since sliced bread until you tick me off and then you go all bad. And so that's why in the dialectical, you know, try to get those sides, uh, the awareness of it's both and develop frustration tolerance. And we can, we can be frustrated and still love somebody. And so that's kind of, anyway, that's one way, that's one way of, of looking at it. So you're researching that. So you found, I want to a, kind of know. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, well, if you found somebody who does dialectical, you know, behavior therapy with borderlines, um, if they know what they're doing. Yeah, I found a couple of them um, for her. Yeah. Um, and I think that she's reached out. She has not had any sessions. Um, but I want to know. Well, hold on a second. I, but but, but I got a question. I, I just have a question here. Sure. She's got a, she's got a psychologist. So why does she need a new one? I think she did not like the psychologist from what I could kind of gather from our phone calls. Well, um, okay, but if that she if, left the if, psychologist. She left him. Okay. <laughs> but if she's a borderline personality disorder, if she really is, because it's misdiagnosed all the time. But if she really is, sure. then then what did I just say? Half the time she's not gonna like her psychologist. That's part of the treatment. <laughs> Yeah. So of of course she doesn't. Welcome like to my friend psychology. dilemma. <laughs> exactly. All right. So what what is the question? So how can I support her? I mean, I've tried to like you know I've given her your show to listen to. I bought her changes that heal. She's also had a lot of trauma in her past. If she calls yeah. me and she's going through difficult times with her husband, I try to remain neutral and completely calm and just kind of. Speak with her, ask her questions. Oh, so what actually happened? And she's like, you know, he did all these things. He hates me. Okay, well, did he say he hated you? You know, just kind of ask questions yeah. um, just to kind of gather information to kind of bring her back down. Kelly, I'm going to start like calling a, you when I'm having a bad day. You're pretty good at this. <laughs> uh, well, it's all thanks to you. I listen to you every day and behave, or boundaries.me right, so, member and reading your book. That's books, great. So. 
Well, there's some stuff on there. That oh, yeah. So give, give, give me, give me, the, give me the question. What do I do? So, how do I? What are some ways that, and some actionable steps that I can take or do or say to my girlfriend when she does call me um, that could be helpful to her um, outside of, you know, just encouraging her to go to, you know, her psychologist, psych- psychiatrist, psychologist. Yeah. Um, whichever one. And how can I, what can I do to support her? Because a lot of times what will happen is the, there will be a breakdown in communication with her husband. Um, it's definitely very dysfunctional. He'll like record her outbursts and call the police on her frequently. I mean, like eight times a month. If she follows him Wait a minute, house, stop. Then... Hold on a second, stop. <laughs> yeah. He calls the police on her eight times a month? Probably, yeah, I'm probably good, like somewhere between four and eight times a month. Literally um, calls, yeah. literally, the police come to their house. Literally eight times calls a month. the police. Okay, so yeah, they knock are, on the door, they is, tell him to, yeah. Is, is he, is he unstable or are these literally eight psychiatric or violent emergencies? I don't believe that they're violent. Again, I just purely well, why would I, why, hearing things. Why, so, why would I why would I call the cops? So based on what does he tell let, let's put it this parents, way. Let's put it this way. What does he tell the policeman when said policeman comes and knocks on his door? What is this guy saying to the cop? Why did why why'd you call us? My understanding, yeah. My understanding is that what from what she's told me is that he will say She's following me around the house. She's screaming at me. She's cussing at me. She's irate. She cannot control herself. And she's just following me around the house, screaming me at me. I told her to leave me alone. And she keeps okay, following so what are the me. Cops, and, and, and so what do the cops do? So they say, okay, well, are there any, is there any imminent emergency? She seems calm now. Everything's fine. Are you guys able to get along? Can you guys work through this? You know, because uh, we don't want to keep coming back here all night. I so, don't think they do. That's know, why I'm wondering who's the chief of police in this town. <laughs> they keep sending these cars out there. All right. So, so your question is, how can you best support her? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, sounds like you're doing a really good job because you are you were clarifying. You know, when she says these things, I love what you said. She said, "No, oh, he hates me." What well, did he say that he hated you? Okay, and so what you're trying to do is you're you're basically you're trying to get her above her emotional state into observing her emotional state and observing her thinking. Exactly. Well, is that really what happened? And so that's a that's a great technique. But by and large, um, the way that that I would think about this that you could be most helpful um, is you just stay very very centered in two things one your your own emotional reactions and responses to her roller coaster rides okay yeah okay so when when she goes up and is doing great and wonderful i'm not going up with her and i'm not going to get yeah. all excited and think oh finally she's going to be well for life and when she goes down and is crazy behavior stuff then I'm not going to get rattled by that. You're going to stay centered, okay? And then you're basically okay. going to you're going to give her two things always. You're going to first of all, you're going to communicate from that kind of neutral, you know, calm position, not get hooked. But you're also going to do two things. You're going to give her empathy and care, but you're also going to give her limits. Okay? Okay. So how so what would that for, look like? Well, does she attack you and get mad at you and scream at you and you go all bad? No, um, I have big boundaries with her. She definitely knows that, like, hey, like that's not what we're gonna do, and you know. And I definitely remain completely neutral. I don't go up with her up or down with her well, down. Well, 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 the um, best thing that the best thing that you can do is have good boundaries with her because, you know, that's one of the big problems with a personality disorder is nobody's ever had good boundaries who loved them. You know, they, they drive everybody away and they turn persecutory or the people enable all this crap and get into the drama and do whatever they want. And then they end up hating them and go to the other side. And so, so basically, right, which seems I, to be pretty... okay. 
I, I like your approach. And so, you know, when she calls, I say, okay, well, you know, let's think about it. Tell me what happened. And then I would ask her questions too about, okay, so then when he did that, you started, did you start screaming at him? And she yeah. says, okay. Yeah. Say, oh, okay, so do you think screaming at him is going to get you where you want to go? Has that helped? Oh, no. Okay, okay well, if, if it hasn't helped, then maybe we could talk about some other things that you could do instead of scream at him. You're just asking her questions, observing her behavior, empathizing. And um, I'm going to, I want your home number. I'm going to call you. You're, you're, you're pretty <laughs> impressive with this stuff. So love and well, limits. That's an honor of, because I really appreciate that. I definitely well, appreciate that because I'm like, I try to do well, but then I'm like, you know, I hope I'm not, you you're, know. You're doing great. But, but here's what I would do. Said. Here's what I would do. Here, this is the most important thing is keep your boundaries. When you say, okay, I get it on the phone yeah. now. And she goes over dramatic and rages and all that kind of stuff. Say, okay, I understand you're upset, but I got to go. I'm going to hang up and you keep your boundaries. Don't let her perfect. Her, see her chaos and all this is going to try to try to make you more flexible to adapt to the craziness. No, what we want to do is you're the sane one here. We want the craziness to adapt mm -hmm. to the boundaries of the sanity. Okay. Perfect. So got to run. Okay, great. I but, think that's super um, helpful. You're, uh, I'm going to put you on the, I'm calling you club, except you're not a Tigers <laughs> fan. You, you got to work on that. Anyway, thanks for your call. Hope yeah, that's I'll work you. on it. Thank you. Okay. Right. Many, many people can identify with Kelly and that you've got somebody who's chaotic in your life, whether they're borderline or not. I, it, I've got a little bit of a, uh, a pet peeve with that because the two things um one is i think there's a lot of armchair diagnosing going on you know that a lot of people read an article or they look at this up on the web or oh that's so and so well maybe maybe not <laughs> you don't know okay if you don't know right if you don't really know what you're talking about diagnosis of a personality disorder there's some complex factors in there a and but the second thing that really bugs me about this whole topic is that that people are, are getting labeled now as they're a borderline personality disorder narcissistic personality disorder and then once people say that then they have this totally to, two problems total misunderstanding misbelief they say and you know you can't do anything about that that's total bs Borderlines have been treated and treated successfully for decades now. I mean, I've done it many, many times. And they do get better given the right kind of treatment. So don't wave the white flag and write people off as untreatable because of a personality disorder. Is it difficult? Yes. Does it take a lot of work? Yes. Is having its ups and downs? Yes. Yes. But is it doable? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if it's borderline or not, but I do know this that all humans are born borderline. We are. If you ever talk to an infant that had a gray day, eh, it's kind of good and bad, you know. Well, you know, I liked it when mom showed up with the milk. It's a little you know, it's, it's not as warm as it as I like it, but I'm really grateful that she cares about me. And and I think I'll talk to her. Maybe she can improve that. No. See, that would be putting the good and the bad together, right? Well, if it's coming to the world and if they're warm and cuddled and given their milk and they're comforted, they go into drunken sailor milk coma. They're just, everything's wonderful. Ah, they're cooing and, you know, everything's wonderful. But then as soon as they feel any frustration, wee, 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 it's all bad. Okay, well, that's expected in an infant. But what good parenting does is it takes those extremes and it brings them together so this infant learns, I don't have a good mommy and a bad mommy. There's not two mommies, which is what borderlines do. 
you just said, sometimes she'll, you're loving and wonder, oh, we're best friends. But as soon as you frustrate me, then you turn into the devil, right? Or I love this new church. And then somebody didn't greet them right. I hate that church. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. And they go from good to bad, good to bad, good to bad. Well, all that is, is unintegrated primary process splitting that infants have, that good parenting contains. And they you learn what every good marriage has got to learn, what every good job has got to learn, what every good church attendee has got to learn. The same job that I love also frustrates me. The same boss that I love also says no to me and puts limits on me. The same spouse that I love also has some habits and hurts my feelings and this that, and the other. And they're all one person. And I love the whole person and have the capacity to deal with both the loving and the resolving problems. That's maturity. So all borderline personality is, in a sense, it's, it's not curing us, the failure to cure us of the original splits that we come into the world with. Now, the other factor, I'm getting a little technical here, that these armchair diagnosticians out on the playgrounds and are doing our extended family is they're not distinguishing between the different kinds of borderlines. And you deal with them very, 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 very differently. Some have a preponderance of the term she used the most is envy, where basically envy defines the good as that which I don't have. And then once I have it, I spoil it and make it bad. Right? That's why you see some people go from spouse to spouse to spouse to spouse or church to church to church to church or you know, house to house to house or whatever. Oh, see, what I have is not good. What I don't have is good. And I idealize it and then I go to it, but now I've got it. And so I spoil it and it becomes unusable to me. And now it's bad. And I got to move on to the next one. Well, that's one kind of borderline. Another kind of borderline is a, a more mature one that basically, basically the problem is rooted in more abandonment than envy-based other kinds of issues. It's way too complicated to, to go into. But my point is, here's what I would like for everybody to do. You know, if you're not their doctor, then why do you need to diagnose them? Unless you have a treatment plan, what we want to do with people is exactly what it's talking about. You want to be stable and you want to be loving. You want to be empathic and you want to have understanding. You want to help them observe themselves and you want to have good boundaries and not let them abuse you. Okay. And not let them get you out of control. And typically when we do that with each other, we become integrative in their lives we don't react when they react we're calming agents we encourage we contain out of control behavior by confrontation and by limit setting why don't we do that instead of diagnosing i just this is a uh, this is a big problem i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on a little rant here I'll tell you another problem where we hear this or where we see this is, is in medications, especially in the, in the psychiatric and psychotropic meds. There are people that are just, you know, and sometimes they do this for religious reasons. Sometimes they do this for their, you know, worldview reasons about, you know, holistic, natural based stuff, which are fine. You know, sometimes they do it for, uh, their own control issue, but you got some people that just go around telling people that need medicine because they truly have a, some biological components to their illness, whether it's depression or bipolar or some anxiety disorders. And they say, what are you doing taking those meds? You don't need those meds. That's a crutch. You should, you blah, 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 blah. And they're talking people out of their medicine when the people actually need the medicine. And they don't need it as a crutch. And that's the misunderstanding that a lot of people put these medicines into one category and they don't even know how they work. I just had a friend who, who, who recently, so many things happened, went through a, you know, she was still 
kind of functional, but what we would call kind of a breakdown. You couldn't leave the house, couldn't be with friends, you know, panic attacks all the time and this, that, and the other. And she called me and said, you know, I, I can't understand this. And I said, well, one, you know, and talking through it, and I said, but what I want you to do is I want you to go see a psychiatrist because I think also you've got some particular, you know, biological metabolic things going on here. And you've got some, some, you know, your brain's being screwed with a little bit and, and we need to get it back to your neurotransmitter levels to a stable place. And, and so she goes and does that and she calls back and said, well, the doctor said I need to take this, this antidepressant and I don't, you know, and, and she's kind of anti taking the medicine because she didn't understand how it worked. It's not a happy pill. I had to explain to her, it's going to restore your brain chemistry. It's not, you're not going to get addicted and that's a different kind of medicine. But the point is, if I, I guess here's what I'm saying. There's something wrong with us being informed adults about fields that are not our area of expertise. That's great, that's knowledge and general knowledge. But sometimes if somebody is, is, is getting care and they're getting good care, you can be a support to that, but be careful about giving medical advice. If you didn't go to medical school, now, I'm getting a lot of pushback on this and this and that, that's fine. But I'm telling you, I've seen too many cases where somebody really, really, really has a real medical need for certain kinds of medicines in some of these areas. And somebody comes along because they're anti and against it and they don't know how it works. They come along and say, it's all bad. You shouldn't be doing that. And sometimes I've seen it lead to extreme problems when somebody goes off their medicine because somebody interfered with that. So just be careful. Careful with these diagnoses. Diagnoses with people. Love them. Support them. Help them. But just be careful if you really don't understand what is happening. Okay? Not all of you, but I just have to say that. I'm on a rant. Sorry. This is my Friday rant day. Okay.